started. Okay. Thank you, Diana. And thanks everyone for joining us for this episode of Connector Corner. I'm Charlie Greenberg, the Senior Product Marketing Manager for Integration Service and Connector Catalog. And I thought we'd start this episode with a scroll down of the Integration Service Connector Catalog. And what you're seeing right now is a series of tiles and logos representing apps and systems. It's here where you establish connections, probably using an API key, taking advantage of event triggers, and also gaining the understanding of what's available in Studio Desktop and Studio Web regarding curated activities associated with the connector. But to look at it another way, each connector has two missions in life, integrate and automate. So we have three major categories, connectors for line of business, connectors for IT system automation, plus connectors for generative or gen AI automation. And of course, if there's no pre-built connector available in any of those categories that fits your system needs, our connector builder allows you to easily create custom no-code connectors for the systems your automation requires. But that's not a problem today because our two primary connectors for MailChimp and Slack, plus their product manager, Akshay Agnihotri, are here and ready to go. So now I'd like to introduce Senior Community Marketing Manager, Diana Gray, who makes these Connector Corner webinars possible. And as mentioned, we're happy to welcome back Akshay, our product manager, who will be today's demoer in chief. Please keep in mind, this is an interactive presentation and we're interested in your questions, your feedback, so please use the chat box or be prepared to go live and talk with us. And for you mentee quiz enthusiasts, uh, there will be a quiz right after Akshay's demo. And with that, it's my pleasure to welcome Akshay Agnihotri. Thank you, Charlie. It's good to be back. Uh, good morning, good evening, everyone. I'm Akshay, Product Manager of Integration Service. And today I have uh, a demo uh, which showcases two of the latest features and one of the features which we are releasing for the very first time on integration service, that is the webhook events uh, using the Slack uh, connector, which we have you know, implemented on for the first time. So uh, people who are already aware of Slack, uh, I don't need to introduce uh, uh, that application, but it is one of the most uh, uh, commonly used collaboration tools. And uh, the demo in which we are going to uh, you know, showcase a use case where we are going to integrate Slack with a very prominent marketing automation system that is MailChimp. And we are going to also showcase how interactive Slack buttons are, which allows human intervention where you decide what kind of automation you want to you know, trigger based on an event which you have received in another system. So uh, MailChimp has been like probably, uh, it, it also doesn't need any introduction, but it is one of the most uh, you know, prominent email marketing system where sales and marketing uh, departments uh, mainly use it. And Slack buttons help you allow, uh, it allows you to review whatever is, like say, if you have a trigger in a system like MailChimp, you can decide instead of just, you know, uh, automatically triggering uh, one workflow, Slack now allows you to choose between two to five workflows or two to five automations. So, it's something which uh, uh, you might be aware of uh, action center or you uh, you might be hearing a lot of uh, long you know long running workflows where human touch points are being implemented so this is a uh, it is a way to achieve that use case over slack now uh, the one more thing which we are also doing is like as you might as many people already know there are 100 plus connectors in integration service so the Slack buttons and the Slack can be integrated with any of those connectors. So pick your, 
favorite connector, integrate with Slack, and you will be able to run the same two to five automations, choose from two to five automations. So in this uh, uh, demo today, we are uh, making two major releases. Uh, Slack, which is in public preview right now, it is going GA finally. Uh, I know it has been a bit delayed, not bit delayed, a long overdue, but it is finally going GA next month. Uh, and we have done a lot of improvements based on the feedback we received, uh, based on the customer request, which we, we got. So they, some of the enhancements which I have already showcased here are the event, the button click, which is the first webhook event ever implemented on integration service. We have some authentication improvements where now you not only can select user token and bot token individually, but you can also select both of them together. So now you can choose by creating a common connection. You want to send messages as a bot or you want to send messages as a user. Plus, we have also added some curated activities. We are also adding one more, uh, uh, you know, generic activity called HTTP uh, endpoint, which allows you to connect to any API of Slack. HTTP activity is a separate release, which will be enabled on all connectors together. But for this GA release, you'll have all these other features in place. Mailchimp, it, was, it is already GA, uh, but one thing which... Uh, is an improvement is the field is the support for custom fields or merge fields. So people who are aware of Mailchimp, they know that custom data, like say, if I am uh, having a form, like a sign up form, for example, every sign up form or every company will have their own requirements of uh, uh, customized data. They want, maybe some companies want to understand the buying behavior of a customer or a lead, and they want the specific uh, data points or fields inputs on their forms. Before Mailchimp was not supporting adding and uh, passing of this merge fields or custom fields, but right now in the current GA release, you have this support. So not only you can do whatever you can do, whatever you could do before, but you can also do it with custom data and you can also capture custom data of subscribers. So that's what we are, go we are also going to showcase in this uh, demo. Plus we have two more uh, events added that is audience created uh, and campaign created. And as I said, HTTP active will be enabled on all connectors. So what are the use case? Now we are talking about touch point, human intervention, but what exactly you can achieve using that? So these are some of those five examples, which you might be able, many of you might be able to relate to. Uh, one is in CRM and marketing. That is whenever uh, opportunity gets closed and one in Salesforce, Oftentimes, it is not just always uh, going to trigger an invoice or an order creation in an ERP. Sometimes, say in, uh, I can speak to speak about a company like UiPath, there will be cases where purchase order will not be available from the customer and you need to manually send an agreement via DocuSign. Similarly, in a construction company, when I get an order, I need to first uh, mail and inform my suppliers that, hey, we have a construction, we have finally won a construction deal. We need all this, you know, uh, the big order of all the raw materials, whatever is ne needed for that construction. I need to immediately inform my suppliers. So these two, three things which can happen based on a trigger from Salesforce can now be achieved using Slack buttons. Second example is something which I'm sure every one of us might have encountered is when you want to approve or deny a leave, leave request of your employee or your reportees, or you want to uh, you know, send that uh, leave request to your manager in, in the most efficient way possible. And most efficient way is uh, uh, via the collaboration tool that is Slack, because everyone, they will spend most of their time on Slack. So this allows you to trigger uh, an automation and to approve or deny the leave request using Slack buttons. Similarly, if I talk about Conquer, uh, then if I talk about uh, Slack itself, we have a ton of use cases, but the current use case, which we are going to showcase in this demo is the fifth one, which is the MailChimp campaign. So MailChimp, uh, there are two things which we do in uh, while via automation on MailChimp. One is syncing of subscriber leads, contacts between a CRM like say Salesforce and an email marketing system like MailChimp. And the, the sync is back way, uh, like uh, back and forth. So whenever a lead uh, uh, score gets updated, you kind of 
back and forth updated. But the second use case, which also can be used, is creating dynamic campaigns, sending that campaign to a target audience or subscriber. The subscriber can be thousand, millions, you name it. And this sit, this uh, campaign set series, or uh, you can say a regular interval of time, helps you to inform the user, to uh, remind the user. And many of you and many of us might have already, uh, you know, uh, encountered those campaigns in our personal email addresses also. So in this demo, we are using two workflows. The first workflow is based on a time trigger or an audience created trigger in MailChimp. We are creating a campaign with a dynamic content. The, the meaning of dynamic content is we are going to use merge fields, which we have in audience dynamically so that for each and every subscriber, the content always has their specific related information, like say first name in that mail. Then we are asking our manager or your uh, you know peer to review your campaign because obviously when you are sending a campaign to thousand people, there is always uh, it's always better to review it once, right? So the first workflow does that and it sends a Slack button message in your uh, team channel, and finally using the latest edition of webhook connector we are going to trigger an automation so let's see directly uh, the demo and uh, this is my first uh, workflow which i was talking about so for this demo i am uh, though i can trigger it using time based trigger i am using a manual trigger because we want to uh, uh, trigger it instantaneously in create campaign uh, as i said we can give dynamic content like this this is nothing but the merge field. For people who don't know what are merge fields, if you go to audience in MailChimp, there is something called as a concept called as merge field, which allows you to create any custom field you want, any and to capture any custom data you want. And these custom data can be referenced using this tag called uh, you know star this uh, dash and f name, or you can also use this any. So you can kind of uh, do whatever customizations you want and you can reference it in your campaign that is the first feature which we are demoing in mailchimp and now as you can see i have already uh, you know tap uh, you know added that dynamic content let's give the campaign name to our date that is 2805 so that we know that it's an uh, uh, instantaneous campaign which we are creating I'm using the second activity of a MailChimp, which is the campaign content. Now, mind you, you can also use a template in MailChimp. So if you have a pre-built template, feel free to just select it from a dropdown. So that also is there, that, that feature is also there in MailChimp. Otherwise, for this demo, I'm also passing a custom HTML. What this custom HTML will do, will I'll show you in the final output, which we get. So, uh, and finally, after uh, sending a test mail to my manager or my peers, I'm asking them via Slack, that is the last step of this workflow, to uh, approve or deny this campaign. So, in Slack, we have added two more parameters, which are called message fields uh, and button actions. So, uh, uh, there is a detailed help uh, guide, which is available. All you need to do is go and click this help button and you'll get a detailed uh, guide, user guide to understand how to use these buttons and how to use these message fields. And we are passing dynamic content of campaign ID, title and subject to Slack so that it is uh, the, the, the people know what exactly they, they are you know, uh, referring to. Plus, as I already told you, I'm sending a test mail. I'm using my personal email address. So this is my manager email address, for example. I'm going to also send this campaign to my manager, plus I'm asking him for his approval on Slack. So let's just run the workflow manually. Or the, the output of this should be, uh, my campaign should be created. My test email on my personal email address, which is this should come, plus I should also get my Slack message using buttons. Great, the first workflow ran successfully. So if I go to my, uh, you know, the first email, this is the email. If I test, as you can see, I'm getting my uh, test email. Now, the, the reason I'm getting default is because this is a test email. It has always already taken whatever default we have given here. 
So in merge fields, you have an option to, if you don't have the dynamic data, like say first name is not available for the customer, you can give a default name also, like subscriber, hello subscriber, or welcome to the family. So this is my test email. Now my manager goes reviews. And when I go to my channel, the team channel, I also get this message that, hey team, we are sending this campaign tomorrow to the audience. Please check your email and approve the same. Now, let's say I have two scenarios. My manager doesn't like this uh, campaign. He says that maybe, hey, you can uh, probably should have changed this or added this uh, you know, component, something. He has a feedback. He'll say reject. I also have a dynamic uh, way to, you know, uh, I'll get that dialog box. That dialog box is optional. But when he says reject, if I go to my logs, right, the orchestrator, as you can see, the the event has instantaneously triggered. So this is the difference between webhook and your normal triggers, which you are used to already on integration service. The trigger happens instantaneously. So you don't have to wait for one minute or five minutes. As soon as the button is clicked, the trigger has started running. What does this do? It creates a ticket in Jira and it replies to that thread. So if you see, I get a reply on this that, hey, the campaign, this ID, and this is the name. If you remember, we have given 2805 at the date. This campaign is rejected by the guy who rejected, Akshat Nihotri, which is me. And there is a Jira ticket created so that whoever is uh, uh, working on the campaign, this Jira ticket can be assigned. Now, if I go to the Jira ticket, and if I say refresh, the content of the Jira ticket uh, has just uh, you know updated, and it is giving me the campaign ID the campaign name, it, which was rejected, as well as the person who has rejected it. So I have passed the data from MailChimp to Slack to Jira, all with a button click. Now, what is the second workflow which is doing this? Let me showcase that. So this is the first workflow which has created that uh, you know message, correct? Now, the second workflow which I was talking about is this, where I'm using the webhook trigger. Button click is the newest event, the Slack event, which we have enabled using webhooks. And it allows you to first dynamically like restrict your triggers because Slack allows you to trigger, you know, you know, get events of your entire workspace. So what we are giving you is we are giving you one of these two filters because we know that for a fact, either you'll be restricting your events to a specific channel or you'll be restricting the events to a specific user. In this case, I am using this demo channel as my filter. And when I, uh, you know, retrieve that uh, uh, button click event, if I just uh, see the JIT object, which I have, for example, this. Yeah. In the button click, I have a detailed set of fields, which allows me to pass data from MailChimp. So like, if you remember, uh, we had created campaign ID, campaign, uh, this, this is the data, the title, subject. There are three fields which are added using message fields, correct? So I want to pass this downstream to Jira. And that's the way to do this is using this uh, uh, output fields, which is nothing but button uh, output. Okay, got a bit stuck. Yeah. Ah, sorry. So it uh, it just got stuck. And uh, in this button click event, you have all the fields, whichever you need, that is in the section block. So you have field three, field two, field text, and the main text. Whatever you want to pass downstream, it is available. And field two will give you the exact data value. So you don't even have to use extract function or extract uh, syntax. All you need to do is just pass this field downstream. So in this workflow, as you can see, first, uh, uh, let's talk about the reject button, what we did. So when it gets rejected, I'm selecting this if uh, block, which is a filter builder. So in this filter builder, I'm just checking what action was performed by the user. So they, this again, all the fields, everything is mentioned in the user guide. Please feel free to go through that. When the approve message is sent or click, I will be sending my campaign to my audience using the send campaign but, uh, activity of MailChimp. And uh, there is another feature which I'm going to showcase now. 
plus the reject button which we did just now is going to just create an issue like this and it is just going to pass uh, the campaign id from mailchimp and the campaign name so this is what a button will do now let's see what happens if i click approve suppose you want to restrict people to just click button only one time i don't want to allow people clicking buttons multiple times so when i click approve i also get one more event which is running as you can see but the difference between this event and the reject event is this one activity called send button response so send button response what it does is it allows you to restrict your uh, button click to only once means you no user will be able to click that button more than once because obviously once you have already approved why you want to click why you want that button to be shown right so that uh, it doesn't confuse your other people correct so as it got success if i go back you see my entire message has been now replaced it has also passed the campaign id and name it has also said the campaign is sent and it was approved by akshar newtri which is myself now if you see this was the test email correct but when i have an audience which has uh, say 10000s of subscribers let's say i have five subscriber in this audience now let me showcase uh, i am just giving you uh, example of two email addresses which i am using that has got uh, you know that got my campaign because i have sent uh, you know i have clicked that approve button so this two uh, these two are my email address which i am showcasing aki and akshay which is my first name so when i go this was my previous test mail but i if i see to this two emails if you see now i am getting my first name in my campaign so this is the dynamic content which i get for each individual subscriber if i go to the second email let's say refresh as you can see the the name has changed because for this subscriber the name is different so this is the power of slack buttons it allows you not only to pass data downstream but it also allows you to trigger one or two automation i have shown you two automations but slack allows you five automations in total so yeah that's all i wanted to showcase uh, i will be happy to answer your questions but uh, before doing that uh, let me uh, hand over to uh, diana i'm sorry diana i don't have that slide but feel free to show uh, that slide with you thanks i think charlie's going to pull that up yeah, so um, as part of the community, we are running a professional automation survey for 2024. We've been doing this for about four years now. Um, so we'd really like you guys to uh, scan the QR code and participate in this. It's a little bit lengthy, but it really provides Im really important data for the automation space. So if you take your time just to copy that, we'd appreciate it. Um, and that's due uh, at the end of this week. And then if you want to go to the next slide. What we're going to do now is the Minty quiz. So I'm going to share my screen. And Charlie, um, I think I don't see it here. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time just to either put in the QR code or copy the Minty that I just posted in chat and get there. Okay, let's see how many people are. Joining, just have five people. Can a few more join? Just wait a minute. You get a prize at the end of this. So it's a, it's fun participation to see how much you learn today. Always a winner. Yes. Anybody else? Okay, let's get going. There we go. All 
I'm good. I've got a few more people. So you need to answer fast to get more points. In today's demo, if the Slack approve button is clicked, A, will customers automatically receive an email? B, colleagues will be alerted via Slack message? Or A, Jira Zendesk ticket is created for marketing? Great. I think most people, we got one person who got it right. So let's see who's the leaderboard. Ambriel. So that was a stumping question from Charlie. Okay, we'll go to the next one. The marketing campaign is created using. Survey Monkey, PDF Monkey, MailChimp. I think you should all get this one. Awesome. Good. So let's see who's leading now. Ambriel, you're. Still holding the lead. And we have one last question here. In this demo, colleagues are asked to validate that the Slack button works, review a marketing email, find ways of incorporating Gen AI. Awesome. Good job, Amrail. So if you can put your email in the chat to me, I'll send out your price right after the call. Thanks so much. And then Charlie, I'm gonna stop sharing. Thank you, Diana. Uh -huh. That was exciting, I must say. Um, so we, we, ha we have the Q and a now, uh, there's still time for additional Q and a questions. And also everyone is always invited to take yourself off mute and just start the conversation, uh, for whatever purpose, uh, right before we get to that, uh, just if you're, if you're not familiar with the connector catalog there's a couple of ways you can start looking at it one is the obvious way go to the connector catalog via automation cloud but there's also and Akshay is uh, quite a contributor to this on the right the connector corner YouTube playlist which has uh, almost two dozen demos using different and multiple connectors with different use cases including uh, a number of AI uh, representation. So please feel obliged or don't feel obliged, but we hope you're obliged to, to take a look at that and learn more about the availability. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Ask Akshay, a, a new feature of the Connector Corner webinar. Uh, I, I saw you answered one in the chat, Akshay. Uh, for yeah, I I actually just want to continue on that answer. I think Vidhi has asked, uh, can you show me the merge functionality, the merge fields functionality? So uh, is it possible to just share uh, the screen for a couple of minutes, Charlie? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. There we go. So thanks for the question, Nidhi. Uh, yeah, we... Uh, if I just show you the, uh, you know, the, uh, the activities or how we are... Uh, uh, you know, passing the merge fields or the dynamic content. So we have two activities. One is uh, if suppose you just want to sync custom data between a CRM and uh, uh, MailChimp, we have this uh, activity called add subscriber. So that will allow you to pass those fields directly in the activity. For example, if I go to MailChimp, uh, 
and there is a activity called add subscriber this the this is the one both add and update subscriber both of them they have this functionality now in this uh, i need to just select the audience so for this demo i'm using is demo audience and as i have already showed you uh, there are like a bunch of merge fields correct so if i go here and go to the manage properties i will find all those merge fields uh, here under the merge field uh, you know submenu so this will allow me to directly pass data in the activity itself all i need to do is just select them and just say update fields which is already updated and under additional options i will get all my merge fields here the second question or the second part of the passing the dynamic content is when i am using set campaign content right i need to use the merge tags which i already showed you here there are there are some thing called as a merge tags right you need to directly use this in your html or in your template if you have a template uh, just use this merge tags whatever mailchimp has generated for you or uh, uh, in this case where i am using customized html let's open it in text builder uh, here also if i just search for f name or first name it's quite uh, uh, a mess but yeah i have this so hello akshay which i you which i got on my uh, you know the, the salutation which i got differently for each email i'm getting because of this merge tags and the merge fields so these are the two way process hope that answered your question nidhi Yes, thank you, actually, and thank you, Vidhi. Obviously, that engendered quite a, a really good response from Akshay. And uh, just to, in case you didn't notice, we do have a provision. Uh, if you're not thinking of a question now, but it comes to you later, uh, feel free to use Akshay's email address, akshay.agnohotri at uipath.com. Uh, so let me ask you, some additional questions, actually, and of course, I, I'll relinquish the screen back to you if you think it's better answered within the uh, application. But my question uh, is, let's start with, um, are there going to be additional webhook triggers uh, as far as um, this particular use case is concerned? Yeah, we have planned to add more webhook triggers, not just on Slack, but on all all connectors, including Mailchimp and uh, all your favorite connectors, whichever you think you can think of. Uh, there are a lot of uh, like a lot of improvements being planned on the webhook and the event trigger front. So yes, sir, uh, you will be hearing from me and my fellow uh, product managers on the new exciting webhook connectors, which we are really uh, sorry events which we are releasing in the next coming few months. Is there a limit on the number of buttons or automations that can be triggered using Slack message buttons? Yeah, there is a Slack has given a limit of five. So you can use five buttons. That means you can have five automations or five if and else uh, blocks, which will allow you to trigger an automation based on say uh, whatever the button you click. So yes, the limit is five. Okay. Um, and let's see, well, I, let me ask you this one because we were actually beginning to get a, a nice flow of questions coming in. Uh, what is the difference? And I was wondering about this myself when you talked about the immediate response as far as the trigger was concerned, but what's the difference between a normal polling trigger and the webhook trigger powering the Slack buttons? Yeah, so polling is a very resource intensive trigger because every one minute or uh, whatever polling interval you choose, every one minute, five minutes, one hour, the polling or the API call is done every that uh, time period which you have selected. So uh, say if I have selected one hour as my polling interval, every one hour, there will be an API call from your orchestrator or your activity to that particular system, say in this case MailChimp, and uh, say in, in, an, in a day, you'll have 24 times that call being made for polling. This doesn't happen in webhook. In webhook, it is automatically triggered whenever there's an event in the system. So you are not making an API call. It's the system who is making an API call back to you whenever there is a change. Like say in this case, a button is clicked. There's a change in the Slack system. You are getting a instantaneous trigger. 
so web books are more efficient they are more faster and they are not as resource intensive means you don't make that many api calls in web books than you make in your old polling triggers actually can you respond to this question from vad uh, does integration service consume a robot license when it runs or how does it run yeah, uh, I did answer it in the chat, but yeah, let me also explain. So in Studio Web, we are using this something called a serverless robots. Uh, so basically, the 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 idea there is to kind of give you an iPass current uh, kind of an experience. So that's why uh, the unattended attended robots are only restricted for Studio Desktop licenses. But for Studio Web, it's serverless robots. But yes, for each workflow which you are running or which you are triggering, there is a robot behind the scene. So you are uh, consuming the license of a robot. Thank you. From Sean, can you create and update the integration service actions in the Studio Desktop client like you have in the web client in this presentation? Yeah, we can do that. It is available both on Studio Desktop and Studio Web. OK, great. Uh, Perhaps one more here. Oh, wait a minute, just a moment. There's, yeah. the, the chat is being used for a whole number of different purposes here. Uh, okay, Sean returns. Uh, do some preview connectors show up in UiPath Studio packages? For example, there is a Discord connector in cloud.uipath.com, but I do not see the uh, an official Discord package when searching in UiPath Studio, even though the quote unquote include pre-release is set. Yeah. Yeah, Discord is, uh, uh, yeah, Discord is also like, I'm the product manager for Discord and it is in public preview right now. Now to access Discord package, you need not install any packages from the managed, proper, uh, managed packages, uh, which you used to do for other, uh, you know, uh, integration service. Because of the latest enhancement called Dynamic Activity Pack or Integration Service Activity Pack, in Studio Desktop itself, left side, if you're using, but yeah, you have the only prerequisite is you need to use 23.10 or above Studio Desktop. In those Studio Desktop, you don't have to install any packages, but on the left side, under Activities tab, you will see a section called Available. And that Available section is where you'll find Discord. So all the newest releases, all the latest features need not be installed from managed packages anymore in Studio Desktop. They will, by default, will be available under the quote unquote, uh, quote unquote available section. Okay. Uh, it is, uh, the documentation is there uh, already. Please mail me if you want to, the, if you want the link of the documentation so that I can give you more steps on how to access that, but it is the, the uh, documentation on the new integration service connector is already in place in UiPod docs. And actually, this may be the last question. Can you sync custom data or, or info of contact slash subscriber into MailChimp using integration service activities? Yeah, so uh, that was the same question when Nidhi asked. Uh, yes, we can do now. Uh, before it was not possible, but right now it is possible. You can use add subscriber, up, update subscriber to directly add your custom data uh, without even logging into MailChimp. Plus you can pass that custom data into your campaign using mail, mail uh, merge tags. So yes, now uh, MailChimp has the full support of uh, custom fields and custom data. All right, it looks like we've um, run out of questions. Uh, which is too bad we had some extra time and and uh, this, this is all very interesting. But thank you, Akshay, for your presentation, for supporting this uh, episode of Connector Corner. Thank you, Diana, as usual. And we thank everyone for attending. And of course, uh, as has been pointed out, this is being recorded. So it's available probably within 24 hours if you want to go back and look at it or share it with friends and colleagues. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, everyone.
or please feel free to contact me on my email address in case of any questions we'll be very happy to hear from you thanks again